Hello, and welcome to another episode of Real Talk with Terry. I'm your host, Terry Cato, and I'm excited to have a new author here, Miss Cynthia Smitherman. She is the author of The Black or the Berry, and I just want to welcome you, Miss Smitherman. Welcome to Real Talk with Terry. Thank you very much. Thank Great you for here. being here. Yes. And if you could just tell the listeners or tell the viewers a little bit about yourself. Well, I am a mother, a grandmother, and I am semi-retitled from real estate. <laughs> um, I'm an entrepreneur, and as an entrepreneur, I wear a lot of hats. Mm -hmm. awesome. And I live in, in Phoenix, Arizona area. I live in Chandler, Arizona, and I'm married, and uh, that's my story. All right. Awesome. And I've been knowing Cynthia for a number of years. Um, we have a real estate connection. Yes. I'm an entrepreneur myself and actually um, have a real estate broker's license in Arizona. And Cynthia was my first broker that I worked under many years ago when I was um, pregnant with my daughter. And, and my daughter is 15 now. So that just tells you how far back we go. Um, so anyway, so I'm honored to actually have you here on the show. And I'm excited to jump into your book and just um, talk about the black or the berry. And first of all, could you just tell us what motivated you to well, before we even get to what motivated you to write the book? First of all, how did you come up with the title? Because we've all heard the saying, the black or the berry, the sweet of the juice. And, you know, that's this thing in our community. It's in songs. Tupac used it in his, he opened up a, one of his raps with it. Um, we've heard it all the time. So how did you settle on that title? Well, it, initially it wasn't to be the Black of the Berry Sweet of the Juice. Uh, the initial title was Whispers. And it was mm -hmm. about secrets uh, mm -hmm. in my family. And I thought about colorism. And it's based upon colorism. And I thought of the saying, the black or the berry, the sweet or the juice, being that I'm a dark complected girl. I enjoy when people would say to me, yeah, she's black. Yeah, but the black or the berry, the sweet or the juice. You know? Absolutely. So that was a combat. So this is the reason why I named it that because it was so appropriate for the situation. Awesome. And it's kind of interesting um, the way colorism works in our community and, and who thinks they're light, who thinks they're dark. Like you look at yourself as being a dark skinned sister. Oh, absolutely. And like I look at myself as being a dark skinned sister. But when I look at you, I don't look at you as being a dark skinned sister. I look at but you I, more I, like brown skin. Like, no, you're not dark. You're more brown oh, yeah. skin. I'm dark. I'm a dark skin. But, but you know what? Skin. How Growing up, and even now, I have a hard time with color. You're either light or you're dark. That's Absolutely. it. There's no in between for me. And I always have to ask my husband, "Am I that color? <laughs> Are we the same color?" Right. Because I don't see it. I just know that you're either dark or you're light. I know I wasn't as light as, as fair as my mother, and I wasn't quite as dark as my father. Mm -hmm. But I'm not light. Mm -hmm. So to so for me, you, you're dark. Okay, you're the same. <laughs> That is that colorism that runs deep. That exactly. in our community, colorism runs deep in families. So I'm anxious to get to the book. So we know colorism played a part, but what Absolutely. motivated you to write your book? Right, right. Absolutely, it did. And there's a little bit more of the title to it. It's actually the black of the berry, the sweet of the juice. Mm -hmm. How deeply held secrets can impact who you become. Mm. has a lot to do with the trajectory in your life Absolutely. you run into problems because of your color it changes who you become so You're absolutely right you know it's, it's prejudice colorism it affects our lives and i and my my even my personal um i guess you bring up a good point how colorism affects you and we live in America. We've all experienced racism as Black women. But for me, the most hurtful things have come from within my own community and primarily my own family. Yeah. I mean, I don't care what a uh, racist on the street calls me. I don't know you. But when it comes from someone in my own family yeah. that I know and love or somebody yeah. in my own community who looks mm -hmm. like me, those mm -hmm. are the most hurtful. Hurtful. And, and Carrie, I will say to you, mm -hmm. I will say to you that as a young girl, there is a gentleman in my, a boy in my community that called me Black Beauty. Oh, and I thought he was calling me a horse. You know what? <laughs> Why are you calling me Black Beauty? Oh, I was so upset. Uh-huh. 
But then I realized that he was telling me that there is beauty in blackness. Absolutely. But it took me a long time to get past it. Absolutely. Because I was not a horse. Right. (laughs) (laughs) Absolutely. That it was actually a compliment. So that being said, how did we get here? What motivated you to write your book? How did you even start this writing journey to get to the Black of the Berry, the Sweet of the Juice? Can you just give us a little bit of background or history about the writing? Sure. Actually, it came from uh, memoirs. My mother wrote, uh, my mother, I took my mother to Alabama to visit her grandparents or, or, or um, ancestors place mm-hmm. and on our way down we talked about different things and whatnot and I asked her to write everything down so she wrote me a 15 page handwritten two-sided you know letter or memoir and from that is what I took the the uh, information for the book but I felt compelled to write this story because I thought it was unique in that uh the things that they go through and we we're talking about colorism today, and this is so on point. And this started back in the 1800s and came all the way up to now. And we're still dealing with colorism, which absolutely. is really you're right. You're you're absolutely right. We're still dealing with colorism. And I know we kind of chit-chatted before we kind of started recording this, but if you can just without giving away too much in the book, because I do want people to go and read this book because it is amazing. It's just a an amazing story the way it's weaved. If you could just kind of tell us about, you know, your mom and your dad and how your dad is dark skin, your mom is light skin. And what some people may not know is that this was forbidden back in those days, you know, mixing, you know, light and dark. I mean, we all know that in probably all of the states at some point or another, it was against the law for blacks and whites to intermarry, but just within the own black community, I don't know if we really know how deep that runs the whole dark skin, light skin. So could you just give us some background about that? My mother and father were, uh, well, actually they were, they met in the crib. They both were in the same uh, boarding house when they were born. Wow. And so they've always been together. However, when it came time for them to start dating, my grandmother, who was very fair, did not like my father, did not like his people, his, his parents, and forbid my mother to, to see him. And they decided to not let anyone break their relationship. So they sneaked off. They eloped. They got married. They couldn't tell anyone in the family they were married. Consequently, my mother got pregnant Mm -hmm. with my sister, didn't tell anyone, and ended up taking a trip to New York with a family as a nanny, and that's where she had the baby, and that's where it starts, all the trouble that they had. And that's where everything starts. And let's just be clear, your grandmother um, did not like your dad and his family simply because they were people that were dark. People they were, were dark complected. They were dark. So it had to do with colorism. It had to and my colorism. grandmother, my mother's mother was fair. My mother was fair. Her, all her siblings were fair. So it had so, nothing to do with their character. Nothing no. to do with. It was no. simply because they were dark. They were dark. They that were dark. Is amazing that two people could not freely love each other simply because one is light and one, and is, one dark. is dark. And they decided to not let that stop them. That's amazing. Which I'm happy about. <laughs> Me too, because we have you. So I don't, again, I don't want to give away too much in the book, but you talk about the entire story of the child and they had to give up the child and just that entire journey and being reunited years later. So that is the story, you guys, that you will get in the book. So I encourage you to pick up the Black of the Berry, the Sweet of the Juice. Can you hold that up and show us yes, that cover? Yes, there we go. The Black of the Berry, the Sweet of the Juice. And this is on Amazon. Where else is the book found? Uh, Barnes and Noble, it should be there probably by the end of the week. They've been having computer glitches too. Yes. So, but it should be Barnes and Noble. If anyone is local, of course, I have the books here. I'd love to. Uh, local to is in Phoenix, Arizona. Absolutely. Here Absolutely. Phoenix, in Phoenix, Arizona. They can or I can them. mail it off to whoever wants to get it if they don't want to go in Barnes and Noble. Awesome. And what about social media? Do you have a social media presence? Yes, um, I am on Facebook. I'm on Instagram. I'm on Twitter. And then also I have a website. Okay. And it's uh, CynthiaJohnsonSmitherman.com or CynthiaSmitherman.com. My website will come up 
it'll show both of the books that I am that I have written at the same time. <laughs> Crazy, and uh, so they're 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 able to go in there and and get uh, the book trailer to tell exactly what it is. They can see kind of a movie about it. Yes, awesome. That's awesome. And a lot of times when people find out you've written a book, they have some technical questions like, how long did it take you to write this book? You kind of threw in there that you were writing two books at the same time. But as far as this one in particular, how long did it take you to write this book? I started in right after my mother passed. She passed uh, December 20. And so I started in January 2021 and I finished it now. Wow. So about a oh, year. Both and a, of them. Yeah. I finished both. At the same time. And when you say both, tell us about the second book that you wrote. What's well, that? the second book is called A Thief in the Dark. Mm -hmm. And it's about how the tobacco industry is targeting black people to, to partake in their, in their product. And it's killing us. We smoke less, but we die more than our counterparts. So it's about that and how I lost my son, my only child as a result of cigarette smoking. It is a preventable disease. It didn't have to happen. Absolutely. And people shouldn't smoke cigarettes. And I'm very adamant about that. Oh, absolutely. And it's interesting that you mentioned that because um, I actually teach and we were talking about ethics. One of the classes I teach is a business ethics class. Uh -huh. And there's an entire case study in one chapter and it talks about the cigarette companies, how they knew years, oh, they, they knew and they still put that toxic product onto Absolutely. the market. It was all, it's all profit driven. Feel, yeah, feel free to show us that book as well. Absolutely. And Absolutely. it's all profit driven, a thief in the dark. Absolutely. And how they would do things, just like you said, to market to the black community. Yes. Isn't Especially that, menthol cigarettes. Yes, the menthols. And I even tell the story. I learned this as a, a marketing major in college, how um, how unethical and unscrupulous they can be. How you, if you remember back in the day when I was a kid, I remember the black men, they would open up their cigarettes, not from the top, but they would open them from the bottom so that they could kind of hit the pack yeah, and hit the, top. Uh -huh, hit the mm -hmm. top and get it out mm -hmm. from the bottom. Well, what one tobacco company did, they put the opening at the bottom. So that they can market to who? Black men. Literally. Absolutely. And that just is an outrage. And, and at that time, they knew what their product was doing, that it was killing people. It was causing cancer. And, and still just, are. And, and, and they still made, are. I think, I think they made $3.8 billion, uh, you know, advertising or making uh, money as a result of cigarette smoking. And it's killing people. And it's and killing people. Sell that. And it's mm -hmm. killing people. We, I think we have gotten better as a society in terms of smoking and cigarette smoking. It's become more taboo now that I'm an adult. And I shared this with my class a couple of weeks ago. I was like, I'm going to age myself. I said, but can you believe when I was a child, I could actually buy cigarettes for an oh, adult? Absolutely. I said, I remember, you know, your the neighborhood, people would send you to the store with a dollar right, and they would say, right. buy me a pack a nickel. of cigarettes. Yes, but well, I had a dime. It was a dime. <laughs> or I would get, I think maybe 12 cents because the cigarettes I remember were 88 cents. Mm -hmm. And they would say, keep the change and you right. get penny candy, penny candy Absolutely. and gum. Absolutely. And um, my, of course, my class, they laughed at that because they had never heard of penny candy. I'm like, you guys don't know what you're missing. <laughs> 10 pieces of candy for 10 cents. For, yes, for 10 cents. <laughs> And yeah. so I'm like, as kids, we live for that, going to the store for an adult to get them a pack of cigarettes for 88 cents. And we got to keep the change. That is unheard of now, a child buying a pack of cigarettes. But when I was a child, that's what I told them. We could buy cigarettes because, of course, we were getting them for adults. But it's just unbelievable that you could do that. And, yes. um, and that's so good. I'm, I'm glad you wrote this book and you're opening eyes. And, and I know you mentioned that you teach classes and you teach about this um, because we, the word is out, but that still doesn't mean that the damage hasn't been done. No. And they have to realize that it affects more than the smoker. It affects the family. Yeah, and one yeah, of the yeah. things that I say, and not, not to really get off into the thief in the dark, but I will say this, mm -hmm. you don't want to write the epithet for your son or your daughter yeah, as a result yeah, of smoking. Yeah. And that's what I had to do. So I'm very adamant about people quitting. Absolutely. Um, so so pl yeah, plug I'm that one. Uh, show us the cover again. And that one is on Amazon as well, yeah. right? Yes, yeah, yes I can see. Yep. A Thief in the Dark by Cynthia Smitherman. It's on Amazon. Mm -hmm. That one mm -hmm. as well. 
Mm -hmm. Um, so feel free. She wrote both of these books at the same time, which as an author, that is just admirable. <laughs> I'm crazy. That's what it is. Because, because I know what it took just to write one book. Right. Absolutely. And so the fact that you are writing two stories that are very personal and that are very important to you. I mean, because one, you're writing it in the voice and from the eyesight of a daughter. Right. And then the other, you're writing it from the eyesight and from the voice of a mother. A mother, yes. And again, Absolutely. very two very important things that are, you know, that are near and dear to you, obviously, your parents and then your child. So, and then to write them at the same time, I just can't imagine what emotional journey that took you it on. Was a lot of tears. Yes, it's very <laughs> cathartic. I'm a lot sure. of tears on both sides. Right. I also want to say one more thing. I am in the middle of starting, I'm on page seven of another book. Wow. <laughs> and it's, even though I'm not an author now, but uh, oh, you is, are an author. <laughs> let's let's put that to bed is, right now. You have yep, two yep. books that yes. are published. Yeah, you're an author. You're a bona fide okay. author. Okay, so tell us about the third. The so. other one is called uh, Two Tiny Feet: A Woman's a Choice to Choose," mm -hmm. and you know what that's about. Yes, a woman's choice to choose. Absolutely. So I am writing on that. And uh, because there's a lot of information out there, a lot of people are talking about Roe versus Wade. And I want to address some issues with that. that people need to understand what that's all about. Not saying they should, not saying they shouldn't, but they need to have their eyes wide open when Absolutely. they do. So Absolutely. That's another story. All we'll right, that's another, another story. Another hey, we'll have you back on to talk about that <laughs> one when you're done. That's awesome. So you guys, um, Go to Amazon, go to Barnes and Noble and grab Cynthia's book, A Thief in the Dark, or either The Black or the Berry, The Sweet of the Juice, grab them both. Wonderful reads, very important messages. And Cynthia, we were chatting before we started kind of recording, and you said something that was very intriguing. Now that you have published two books and you're working on a third, and you said you never grew up like wanting to be an author or thinking no. that you would write a no. book. So... I mean, what advice then, being that you didn't grow up, you know, aspiring to be a writer or an author, what advice would you give to others who may aspire to write a book? You know, what would you tell them? What kind of advice? Well, I think everybody has a story to tell. Mm -hmm. And I think we all, we learn from other people's lives, experiences, mm -hmm. and a lot of people journal. And in journaling, you'll find that you have a book. You just need to sit down and, and you know, make sure that you put, it, put pen to paper mm -hmm. and put your thoughts in there, put your feelings into it, and then find a publisher to publish it and to tell you what direction you need to go. I'm learning by the, the hem of my skirt. I mean, I don't know what I'm doing, but I know that I needed to, to say, I had to tell the story. Absolutely. So I, Okay. Absolutely. And I love what you said, because I echo that I, I tell people that as well as an author is that we all have a story, we all have a message. And if we have a story, then there's a reader out there that wants Absolutely. to hear our story, and they need to hear our story. Because Absolutely. so I totally echo what you're saying. That is so true. So as we get ready to close, is there anything else that you would like to share with the viewers, the listeners, whether it be about one or the other book or just anything in general, what would you like to leave us with today? Well, I would like, of course, for people to read the book because it's a good experience and they, they can probably relate to it. And it'll, it'll help them, especially with uh, Black of the Berry, it will help you have pride in who you are. I mean, we're all different, but we're all the same. We're unique, but we're still the same. And so not to let people make you feel that you're lesser than. Uh, so my book, The Black of the Berry, The Sweet of the Juice, will talk about colorism, about discrimination, and that it shouldn't hurt you going forward. You should Absolutely. be you should grow forward from it and, and be successful regardless. Absolutely. I love that because growing up, I loved my brown skin. I did not think anything of it until other people started trying to make me feel less than because I was dark. So that's why you have to be so careful what you say to children, because it stays with you. It stays, again, growing up when I was a little girl, 
I didn't think nothing of my skin. Right. I liked it, quite right. honestly. Right. When I looked <laughs> in the mirror, I was pleased with what I saw That's until right. you start going to school and intermingling in the community and you hear people saying about, oh, light skin, dark skin, pretty, ugly, whatever. Yeah, you right. know, that's when I became conscious of, oh, I'm dark skin. Yeah. Like, oh, okay. Who knew that? <laughs> right. I, I was like, who knew? I'm like, okay, I just thought we were all Black people. Yeah. But, you know, we we are who we are. We, we're right, we are who we are. Someone tells us that we are of color. But right. I will tell you that my son in, in Kitty Castle, uh, which was a, a daycare center, he came home one day, just a little tot, you know, he's a little toddler, came home and said, Mommy, what color am I? Someone said something to him, and he wasn't even old enough to be in kindergarten. Wow. And he learned at that time that there was a difference. They were making a difference of who he was. So yes. it starts at an early age. It starts at an early age. And you brought up a memory that I have when you said son, daycare. Almost an identical thing happened with my daughter yeah. on the preschool playground. Right. A little girl right. telling people that they were white and that they were black. And we, exact same thing. And then my daughter gets into the car and that's the first discussion that she has. Because of course right. I'm dark. Her dad is lighter and she's mm -hmm. in between the both of us. Right. And I'm like, what happened on the playground? <laughs> I was like, who said that? I'm like, who said what? And it was no, like, I gotta argue all that. Right. <laughs> it is like, I'm like, who told you? I'm like, because my because I was like, we didn't talk about like race like that, you know, in the house yeah. and around her because yeah. she was so young. Well, today you have to prepare them. They go you out there into the world and they're it's they're mean out there. They're you, cruel. They are. They're very and mean, and you brought up a good point. It starts at a very young age. It starts at a very young age, and I and I was just I was caught off guard, quite honestly, because they she was preschool just like you with your son. My daughter was preschool, and she gets in the car, and we start talking about race and colorism. Well, am I black? Are you black? And mm -hmm. you know, and mm -hmm. who's white? And you know, I'm like, oh my god! I'm like, so yes, it starts. And we were worried about the birds and bees. That wasn't what we needed to worry about. You know, it was <laughs> the colorism. It's yeah. the colorism. So please go read the book. You will not be disappointed. Thank you, Ms. Smitherman, for joining us today. Thank you, Terry. You're welcome I on this episode it. of Real Talk with Terry. So I always like to leave you guys with something positive. So as we close, remember that yesterday is a yesterday is history. Tomorrow is a mystery. Today is a gift. That is why we call it the present. So make this 24 count. Thank you Very all nice. for tuning in and we will talk soon. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Bye. I appreciate it so much. You're welcome.